G'day ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Victoria Free video and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to increase standard of living in Victoria 3. Now in order for us to increase our standard of living in Victoria 3, we need to meet our population demand. Now you're probably saying that's a great question. Now, there are several ways that we can do this. Now, we can come over here to the market, click on staple goods, and we can actually see the relative prices that we can see in the British market. Now, as you can see here, groceries are pretty expensive, along with transportation and many other things. Now, you can see here that we are only meeting about half the buy orders with our sell orders. Now, we do need to produce more grocery stores in order to meet the buy orders for our population. Now, the way that I like to do it is more of a, a lot more of an accurate way of describing it. So, what you guys do is bring your cursor, hover it over over the 12.0 over the standard of living. What I like to do is hover my mouse over middling, hover over the plus 6.7 percent. And now, as you guys can see here, you can see what your population is spending too much on, and what is cheap and what is expensive. Now, as you guys can see here, we are spending about plus 68.3 percent on groceries. That's really expensive. And same with transportation. Now, everything else seems to be pretty cheap, like such as liquor, which is a negative 22.2 percent, grain, negative 16.4 which is pretty good. But most of the things that we need for standard of living, such as clothes, furniture, and groceries, we really need to start building some more. Now, that's what we're going to do. Now, what you guys can also do here is check your population. Now, as you guys can see here, in our population tab, the standard of living in New South Wales is currently 11.8, with it being secure, middling, and impoverished. So, so far, it is looking all right. But what we're going to do now is we are going to go ahead and build ourselves some groceries. So now we're going to go ahead and just focus on one area at a time. Now, to be honest, I would usually focus on two, but for this video, we're going to increase the standard of living in our capital. Now, for the majority of standing and living to increase, you may need to focus on nearly all of your regions, but it's usually really good to focus one or two at a time, as it is as you can focus more and not let things slip out of your mind. So what we'll do here is we're going to go ahead and build two grocery stores, build one furniture manufacturing, and build one textile mill along with one tooling workshop. Now, as we do all that, we're going to come over here to research and production, and we're going to go ahead and actually research canaries for our grocery stores, and I'll explain as to why as when they're done. Now, another thing also to keep in mind is we are part of the British market. Now, you're probably thinking, what does that mean? Well, since we are part of the British market, we actually don't need to build anything agricultural or any resources because the British market provides us everything that we need so then that we can focus on industrial items instead of others. Now, if you were playing such as a nation such as Japan, you may have to build logging camps, coal and other things, etc. But since if this is your first time playing Victoria 3, I highly recommend playing areas that are part of the market and you can do this by clicking on the trade lands and seeing which area has access to which market. So you can do areas such as Norway and Sweden are part of the Swedish market. So you could place places like Norway, you could play Schleswig, uh, and many other places, maybe Canada or any other place, really. But you can also join other markets. Let's say if I wanted to be part of the French market, even though I really can't. But you would come over here to France, interactions, and you would try one... Oh, that I do not get... I don't have any of the options. But you'll have options such as protect and custom union. Now, obviously, it will depend on what you're doing in your infamy, and many things obviously play a big part in whether a nation has interest on in you, you have good relations with another, with one another. It really just depends on the situation. Now, another thing to keep in mind as well is your population also really does dictate your standard of living. Let's say you start in Australia and you start building resources, and then you start building manufacturers. Things are going to start getting a little bit crazy. The reason why I say that is because you'll start to waste your workforce. Now, I'm a big victim as you can watch in my Australia video, I started building stuff that I shouldn't have built in while part of the British market. I know, big rookie mistake on my part. But essentially, let's say if I was to build a logging camp right here. If we do that, we're going to start wasting our workforce in something that is not needed when we can put them somewhere better that can contribute to the standard of living. Our first ever food grocery store has just finished building. Now, as you can see here, the employment is about going to max itself out, which is really good. So obviously, the more employees we have, the more groceries we can produce. Now, as you can see here, we're producing about 26 groceries so far, which is about, you know, it's not the most productive grocery store in the world, but it's 12 in most productivity, which is really good. Now, what we can do here is something absolutely amazing. Now, for production methods, we can come over here and use sweeteners, which is also going to now start using sugar. So, obviously, we are, since we are part of the British market, we don't need to worry of that stuff. Now, we do, uh, now, what we can do here is we can also focus on pot steels, but since our liquor is at a 
a pretty moderate price. We don't really need to switch it to, to it just right now. So more or less, it's pretty good just the way how it is. So we will leave it. And we now have canaries, which is absolutely wonderful. Now, what we're going to grab now is mechanical tools, so then we can grab railways later on to focus on our state of living. Now, if we come back over here to our groceries, we can now go ahead and activate canaries, which will now increase the amount of groceries that we are producing by plus 30. So we are going to go ahead and activate that. Now, as you can see here, we're number one in the world, along with being 26 most productive building in the world, which is absolutely wonderful. Now, as you can see here, every Everything here is just going to get even better from now on. Now, obviously, our standard of living isn't increasing as much since we are just more or less focusing on our population here in New South Wales. Now, as you can see here, our upper strata is now prospering with our middle strata now securing and our lower strata still being a bit impoverished, which is fine. And South Australia going for another damn revolt. Can you stop? I swear, you look at Australia, there is revolts every single damn time. Take a chill pill, man. But so far, so good. <laughs> now, we'll take a look here and we'll take a look at our middle strata and do a point plus 8.2 percent now as you can see here our groceries are now plus 50.3 percent which is really really good now what i'm going to start doing now is i'm going to get rid of all of these because you know we all make mistakes now what we'll do now is we'll start focusing on groceries more on a wider spectrum such as victoria and queensland now that we have most of the needs here in good old new south wales things are just going to get better and better especially now with us building this one it's going to blow up trust me it's going to be Smexy. Hey, I know Dubbo! Dubbo! Yeah, Dubbo! Get on, Dubbo. Where's Wollongong? Do we have a Wollongong? No, we don't have a Wollongong. Okie dokie. So now that our second food grocery store has been built, you can see that the employment is now 10.2 thousand, which is really, really good. Now, obviously, groceries here are still pretty expensive. As you can see here, New South Wales price is about plus 46.1 percent compared to base price, but so far, it is much better than what it was before, which is really, really good. And as you can see here, we're now getting a little bit closer to our buy orders which is absolutely amazing now as you guys can see here we can hover over now the more green things are the better now what you can do to see this well you click on this little thing to countries and you can click on standard of living now as you can see here victoria is population is middling while ours is still you know still impoverished but once we get ours up to 15.0 it will now be middling which is going to be much better and uh, a lot of people don't want me to have colonialism but we're going to grab it anyway so it will be fine now as Everyone, now, as you can see here, our groceries have dropped down to a whopping 23.5%. Now, we take a look at as a whole. Yeah, it's now 23.4%, which is absolutely amazing. Now, in order for us to increase our standing of living more, we would probably need to focus on fine art and transportation. Now, in order for us to get fine art, you do need to build ourselves some art academies. But since we do want to just focus a little bit harder on other things, we will be trying to build a bit more stuff in Queensland and other places, etc. So, so everything is going to be much better. But if we take a look again at our secure, you can see that we are still paying a little bit much for furniture, luxury clothes, and luxury furniture. So obviously, we are going to build a little bit more of that. And then later on, we are going to go ahead and build some art academies, probably more or less best at two in New South Wales, which is going to absolutely make us insanely gold on. And that is another food grocery store being built. Love to see that. Now, one thing that you guys can also do is you can also change production methods each different area. So let's say I wanted to change this one to pattern steel. Instead of it also just producing just groceries, we can also just have it also produce alcohol and groceries. So it makes us diverse things just a little bit more. Now, as you can see here, we do have a pretty high grocery store here, but obviously we can get it to produce more, but obviously we don't want to increase the price of groceries as much as we already have. And while I'm at it, I mean, I could go ahead and click on Federate Australia if I really wanted to, but uh, I think we're going to hold on to it just for now, just until we can get our things up to middling. And I'll show you guys what I really mean. Okie dokie. So now that our furniture has also been produced, we can go ahead, switch them to lathes, and then actually get them to focus on precision tools. Now, what this is going to do, it's going to do the same thing like it is for the groceries. Now, as you guys can see here, that our, we are spending a lot on hardwood and tools alone just to make these items. Now, what we can also do to decrease this is to either build ourselves some more tooling workshops or to come over here to resources and build ourselves some logging camps. But since we don't need to do that, since we are part of the British market, we can just come over here import hardwood and we can just grab some from the russian market which does lower down our bureaucracy which isn't all the best but you can see when we come back here to furniture it should start going down 
So as you can see here, everything is now working wonderfully. Okay, water tube boiler as well. So now that we have also built, we got railways and so much more. So we have also got our textile mills and we're going to do the same thing here. Dye workshops and craftsman sewing. So as you guys can see here, we are now producing clothes, furniture, and groceries. And soon enough, we'll be able to do paper. And then we can also later down the line, even build glass with or ceramics for more or less our upper class strata. Now our standard of living is a bit rough at the moment because I do have my taxes all the way up. So I'll just lower them down a bit just so I could actually build the arts academy, etc. So now that we come over here to our standard of living, you can see that our middle strata and upper strata are doing pretty well. Now we're going to take a look at our lower strata to see what's going on. So the majority of them do want us to build transportation as it is probably one of the a few only last high expensive things left for us to do so what we'll do is we'll come over here come to railways and we'll build about probably two down here now what we can do here is probably stop building this arts academy now and now that we are producing one alone this should be good enough as it is as we can now start producing fine art for our upper strata which is obviously going to decrease the price of it as you can see here as it's going down very very slowly which is going to be absolutely amazing and as you guys can see here our standard of living has just randomly jumped up to 15.3 which is absolutely amazing and we've even got ourselves a national anthem as well which is beautiful so that's really all I have to say I mean yeah um that's mainly how you guys increase standard of living I mean if you guys are very new to the game I highly recommend playing an area that does have access to a market I mean Western Australia has suddenly done its own thing but what I'm gonna do here quickly is just grab Federal Australia which is gonna be beautiful we do now have Tasmania etc etc. Very good to see. Bingo. And we can see here in Tasmania, they have started building glassworks as well, which is even better for our population as they do produce porcelain and glass. And since we can do that, we can come over here to buildings, urban, and scroll all the way down. And as you can see here, urban center, what we're going to do here is we're going to do market squares, gas streetlights, and then we could also upgrade to public trans. But since we aren't really producing any transportation at the moment, we're probably just going to go ahead and leave that out. But as you can see here, we are already just a minor power alone which is absolutely wonderful so that's basically guys how you can increase your standard of living here in victoria 3 if you guys really love victoria 3 content and you guys want more how-to tutorials don't forget to leave a like and don't forget to hit that subscribe button i mean we just hit a thousand subs which i'm still gobsmacked about i don't even know <laughs> what to do anymore but uh yeah if you guys want to see more content i'll see you guys in the next time Peace out. bye bye